The press conference will begin in two minutes. For the journalists joining us in the digital press room, if you'd like to ask a question, you can click the raise your hand button. When you are called upon, we will unmute your microphone, and then you also will have to unmute your own microphone. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us. Where do I um, start and stop uh, when talking about Secretary Connie Lawson and what she has meant, not just to our state, but more importantly to the citizens of our state? Um, the Lawson legacy is one that has been established over the years. It's one that is really the model of public service. And it's really one that I hope that future leaders will be inspired by and aspire to do half as much. Uh, you have been giving of yourself and your family time for decades, and our state is so much better for it. You, of course, you know, serving your neighbors in Hendricks County, your home county, and then coming to the State House and the State Senate and then being a neighbor just down the hall um, as the longest serving Secretary of State in our history. Um, all along the way, by the way, you have become a leader among your peers in each of those positions. People have looked to you for your counsel and for your wisdom and to learn from it. Certainly, I count myself in that, uh, in that bunch. And so to have not just that legacy, but to truly be an Indiana legend, um, to, to be Mrs. Integrity every step of the way, every day, every year, um, we say thank you. And, and words will never be enough, um, but I said before, I count myself fortunate, lucky, fill in the blank, um, to have been able to work with you and to be friends. We've been uh, working together. I, I, it, it doesn't seem like it's been 16 years, but it's been 16 years just in this building that um, we've come to know one another and, and look to each other for help along the way. And I, uh, I'm going to miss having you as a neighbor just down the hallway. And I know I speak for a lot of other folks in this building and in this state, but I just ask of you, as I already have, uh, I beg of you not to change your cell phone number, I'll say it again, uh, because you know more than anyone, I will call, and uh, I will be asking for, for help along the way. As your trail and my trail unfold, um, you love this state, and it's been apparent each and every day. And we now turn to someone else who loves this state just as much. 
And I can, I can tell you that not only has Secretary Holly Sullivan um, been working not just in this building, but working closely with Connie Lawson, but you've worked on issues of mutual interest and gotten deep into the weeds and made a lot of progress together. And that's what kind of makes today pretty special for not maybe just you two, but for the prospects of Indiana going forward, this almost seamless transition. And to be able to hit the ground running on day one, minute one, hour one, because of all your work and collaboration together to get to this, to get to this moment. And as you and I talked, um, the Lawson legacy leaves big shoes to fill, but you are the absolute perfect leader to do that. And that's been evidenced by all of your work and your career and what's led you here. We had a number of overly qualified candidates, um, but Secretary Sullivan was always at the top of that list. And as we say around here, you never relinquished that poll position. Um, and I have just even um, become more grateful in spending more time with you and getting to learn about your impressive career uh, to date and, and equally as important about your vision and your commitment to the future. I'm, I'm just thrilled. I know I speak for a lot of Hoosiers um, that you did step up in this statewide leadership role. Again, you worked together, collaborated on you know, strengthening our uh, election-related cybersecurity. Um, you've helped champion and lead, you know, issues in the General Assembly to make sure Indiana had a fully funded infrastructure program, something very important to our state. And you bring all these qualities from the private sector as well that are going to be put right in use in this executive office. Um, but I think what what really jumped out at me in reviewing your background was just your, your commitment to your community and your service in the community and your, the way you lean into helping women develop and, and steering youth in the community. And so in addition to these two jobs, I'm like, how does she have time in the day to be on so many boards? and? and commissions and to play a leadership role. You're just hyperactive in your um, giving of time to others. And that's, that's something special. And I didn't even mention she's a hockey mom. And so <laughs> keeping up has never been, never been an issue. So with that, congratulations, Madam Secretary. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Governor, for that kind introduction. But first, I want to take time to thank Connie Lawson for her three decades of public service and leadership in this great state. She has been a trailblazer for women in Indiana government and for me personally, a role model. And I just, um, I'm so grateful for her and her service. Thank you, Connie. Yeah. Likewise, I'm extremely thankful to Governor Holcomb for his trust and confidence in this appointment. And today, taking office, the top priority for me is to safeguard Indiana's record of free, fair, and secure elections, ensuring that all Hoosiers know that their vote counts. We will continue this ongoing effort of defending our elections, but I'm also very excited to take on and tackle the roles and other responsibilities of this office by ensuring that we protect Hoosiers from financial scams, financial um, hardships, and fraud, as well as continuing to cut red tape by excellent business services. Beginning this new chapter today, I wanted to pause briefly and to be able to send a heartfelt thank you to the constituents of House District 78. It has been an absolute honor to be able to represent you here at the State House for the last eight years. I also want to thank my husband, Chad, my three kids, Dalton, Savannah, and Sawyer, who made a very quick trip up to Indy this morning to be able to be with me today. And I just wanted to say thank you. Working with our governor, 
working with our legislators and our local partners, and the office's excellent professional staff. I am absolutely excited and honored to serve all Hoosiers now as your Secretary of State. Congratulations again. Thank you. Uh, Connie, I know you have some uh, long overdue recognition to receive, <laughs> and no one has no one is more deserving than you, but did you have any kind of parting words to share? Sure, uh, thank you. Um, Holly, it was nine years ago today that I was appointed Secretary of State. And I will tell you that I found the job to be rewarding and challenging at times, but I enjoyed every minute of it. And I remember when I was in your shoes, I was so excited. Uh, that Governor Daniels had chosen me to uh, uh, fill a vacant spot in the secretary's office. Um, and I was, uh, you know, it was great anticipation, and I was um, considering, you know, what, what the job would bring and what it would mean, uh, but also, was also a little bit concerned. Uh, you know, am I going to really be able to do this? You know, I had been a county clerk. I'd been in the state senate for 16 years. I chaired the Senate Elections Committee. We were 54 days away from the presidential primary of 2012, so it was a daunting task. Mm -hmm. And I remember the first Friday night um, that I went to my car, and my heart was beating so hard, and I could tell my blood pressure must have been sky high. <laughs> and I had to sit in my car for a few minutes and just take some deep, deep breaths so I could drive home. But I want you to know that will never happen to you. You have wonderful support welcoming mm -hmm. you to the Secretary of State's office. Uh, the staff is absolutely amazing. And we have been working on some exciting reading for you. <laughs> we have lots of transition right. documents for you to read. Uh, we'll even explain to you all of the acronyms that are used in every division. Uh, and so I know you're going to stay up at night. You'll probably be up till 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning reading that stuff because you're not going to be able to put it down. Um, just one last parting warning, if you will. As of today, your first name is no longer Holly. It's Secretary Sullivan, and uh, the staff will call you Secretary. Uh, and as of today, my first name is Connie once again. So thank you. Thank you, Connie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Rachel, I can't see you today, but why don't you um, tee up some questions if there are any? Yes, sir. Elizabeth with WNIT Public Television. Hello, Elizabeth. Thank you for joining us. Hello. Thank you for inviting the media to be part of this announcement. It's such an important position. Yes. I wondered if there are any changes to be expected in terms of leadership or staffing at the election division, the securities division, or the business services division, or if that would be something the new secretary would uh, consider further on down the road. I'll defer to you, Madam okay. Secretary. <laughs> Thank you. One thing that I'm looking forward to um, with this appointment and serving as the Secretary of State for Indiana is the smooth transition with the amazing professional staff um, that Secretary Lawson, or Connie Lawson, has put together. Um, and I expect um, to be able to work with them, and um, I'm excited. Tom Davies of the Associated Press. Hello, Tom. Hello, thank you. Um, Previous Secretary of States have had uh, much experience with election issues, either as a county clerk or working in the Secretary of State's office. Uh, you don't have that kind of experience. So what kind of experience do you have with uh, voter and election law matters that you'll be bringing to the office? I would say it's piled high and deep and intimate, uh, if I could just chip in. This was part of the reason why Secretary uh, Sullivan really jumped off the page, because of her experience in uh, legislative matters as, as pertains to inside the Secretary of State's office and her duties. You want to Thank you. add to that? Thank you. 
No, I think that's a good question. And I come um, into this job with eight years of experience in the legislature, many different leadership roles um, within that time there, as well as serving on elections committee and partnering with the Secretary of State's office for the last four to five years on carrying legislation and modernizing Indiana code um, to work within that office. I also come with an engineering background, which specializes in process management. And that's exactly what I want to do here in the Secretary of State's office is take on the future of election security and the processes in place that need to happen for the future of election infrastructure and the planning that goes into that for the next two, four, six, eight years. Um, and being the person that uh, in the House of Representatives last year before the 2020 election that carried the cybersecurity bill, this bill was the enabling legislation that allowed for election cybersecurity infrastructure to be in place before the 2020 election. So I look forward to continuing that and using my legislative background as well as my engineering background to um, work through putting together the future of election integrity. Yeah, and Tom, I would just, just add to that that one, one thing that we, we discussed was um, Secretary Sullivan's desire to get out and, you know, go to all of the 92 counties. We were, we were kind of seeing who loved Indiana more and who liked to get out. So it's not just that she knows county clerks all over the state of Indiana, but she's going to get out and around the state um, as the days ahead unfold. Absolutely. Steve with KPC Media. Hi, Steve. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you all doing today? Doing good. Today's a good day. Yes, uh, Secretary Sullivan, um, following the 2020 election, we've seen uh, states uh, pass a variety of election measures, some going more restrictive, others, um, you know, going in the other direction. I was wondering, as you look at Indiana today on, uh, I guess, your first minute on the job, uh, do you feel that Indiana's uh, current election landscape is uh, pretty good or are there some things that you'd like to see the state implement over the next few years? Thank you. Um, I think Indiana has become a leader in election transparency and election integrity. And I, for one, am extremely confident in Indiana elections, and I hope Hoosiers are too. Rob Burgess with the Wabash Plain Dealer. Rob, good to be with you. Hope to talk to you tomorrow yeah. as well. Absolutely, always. Um, congratulations on your new role, Secretary. Um, following up on the previous question, uh, what is your opinion of a couple of elections-related bills making their way through the State House right now? I'm thinking specifically of Senate Bills 353 and 398. Uh, that first one would prohibit the governor from altering the dates of elections during a state of emergency, uh, such as happened here last year. Thank you. I think we're just beginning the second half of session. There's a lot of steps. Um, I believe in the legislative process. It's a process for a reason. And I would share that I um, firmly believe that the governor, alongside Secretary Lawson and our party leaders, executed um, a well-run election in the year of 2020. And one of the biggest benefits that we had was being able to um, gain more time to be able to make um, safe and educated decisions to keep Hoosier safe during that election cycle. Eric Berman, WIBC. Afternoon, Eric. Afternoon, Governor. Afternoon, Madam Secretary. Um, picking up on the theme of the last couple of questions, one of the steps that we took last year was to allow universal mail-in balloting in the uh, primary, though not in the general election. Some states already have that. Other states have looked to do that. Is that a step that you would endorse as secretary going forward without an emergency? And are there steps that you would endorse as far as tightening election security? Thank you. I think uh, there is a strong balance between in-person and mail-in voting. Um, and I think that balance needs to be there. But I would say that this matter is before the court. And at this time, I don't um, feel I need to make any further comments. Abdul Hakeem Shabazz, Indy Politics. Abdul, afternoon. Good afternoon, Governor. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Secretary. Uh, by the way, Governor, thanks for not making me a liar this morning. I really do appreciate it on my website. So, <laughs> thank you. Don't, don't mention it again. <laughs> uh, Holly, question for you. Uh, obviously, uh, your service Secretary of State, uh, I'm asking now, do you plan to run for the job when it becomes available in 2022? Thank you, Abdul. I am 
extremely excited um, to take the oath of office a half an hour ago to be the Secretary of State for the state of Indiana. And I plan on making um, a smooth transition into the office when I walk down there in about a half an hour, and then we'll make those future decisions and announcements here soon. I'm sure you'll be invited. Absolutely, Abdul. Lindsay O'Doty, the Indianapolis Business Journal. Afternoon, Lindsay. Good afternoon. Indiana has consistently had really low voter turnout. So is that something you'll work to improve? And if so, how are you going to go about that? Thank you. Um, I sir. One thing I'm really excited about now is I get to serve all Hoosiers in the state of Indiana as Secretary of State. And I plan to continue to use the resources of the office um, to outreach and to ensure that Hoosiers of all backgrounds are um, encouraged to turn out, but more importantly, that they have confidence that each of their votes will count. Nikki Kelly with the Fort Wayne Journal-Gazette. Afternoon, Nikki. Afternoon. I was hoping you could just tell us when you found out the word officially and what was your reaction? Um, I found out here very recently um, over the weekend, and my reaction was one of, um, I guess, an emotional cocktail, a very, very, very thankful, very excited about the future of Indiana. As the governor said, quite frankly, one of the things that drove me um, towards this position is I honestly love the state of Indiana, and I have such a passion to be able to fight for the future of Indiana and to ensure that we continue to have the election integrity that we are known for, and to continue to work towards um, being known and remain known as the number one state in the nation to do business. Um, so those things are really important to me, and I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic to be able to uh, travel statewide and get to know even more Hoosiers. Brandon. Nick, Nikki, I'll just, I'll just share that when I found out that she was going to be spending time with her family at a hockey game of which her son won, won yes. multiple games, <laughs> uh, I wanted her to know so she could spend time first with her family before this. Brandon? Brandon Smith, Indiana Public Broadcasting. Afternoon. Afternoon, Governor. Afternoon, Madam Secretary. M-I-Z. Um, -I, I was... <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> Oh, boy. I was curious, as a, as a now former legislator, how active a role, perhaps not this session, but going forward, do you plan to be in the legislative process as sort of getting them to enact your vision for what you want Indiana's elections to be? Thank you, Brandon. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to leave um, the legislature when I have um, created such strong relationships with um, colleagues in our party and across the aisle. And one thing that I always treasured and thought very highly of um, with Secretary Lawson is her um, respect and her uh, work with the legislature after she left the Senate. And I can't wait to continue the work that we've already started um, in the legislature together. I can't wait to partner and um, to share uh, the vision that we want for Indiana's future in election infrastructure. And I know that um, I see the Secretary of State's office as a uniter, and I've always worked um, with both sides of the aisle when we craft good policy in the state of Indiana, and I continue um, to do that, and will continue to do that in the Secretary of State's office. Um, but I, I know that those relationships that I built in the legislature aren't going anywhere, and they're right down the hall, and we're going to continue to work together very well. Our final question is from Caitlin Lang with the Indianapolis Star. Afternoon, Caitlin. Good afternoon, both of you guys. Um, as the new go-to person on elections in Indiana, Secretary, do you believe uh, or have any concerns that the November election, presidential specifically, was illegitimate um, across the United States? Caitlin, I would tell you that today I am um, hyper-focused, to use Governor Holcomb's <laughs> word, on Indiana. And when I look at Indiana, I have the utmost confidence in Indiana's election. And I hope that Hoosiers around the state do. The ones that I've talked to here recently absolutely share that confidence. And I think that's where we're going to focus, and that's the election that we're going to continue to defend. Thank you so much for joining us today. That concludes today's press conference.